You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. To It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Dr. Martha will offer various solutions that will expand your horizons, offer solid possibilities, and guide you through developing the skills needed for your desired outcome in everyday life. So now, please welcome the host of It's All About You, Dr. Martha Latz. Welcome, welcome. We are coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. I am your host, Dr. Martha Latz, and our show is It's All About You, broadcasting from the East Coast, where I have an office in South Florida. As you know, my expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life and transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, at home, and with friends. There have been a current request for a topic, and that's what we're going to look at today, and it's on fighting fair. And the question is, is there such a thing? Short answer, yes. And we're going to be exploring how to fight fair. So ready for another great show? I am. So as we previously discovered, uh, yes, it is worth the effort to ask for forgiveness, to be forgiven, and it's all possible even after a deep hurt. And how this is done is by being accepted. And then it's just, and followed by, in a perfect world, a just, right, sincere, heartfelt apology. Even if the person is not sorry and is still alive or is dead, it is all worth the effort. Just a just right and sincere heartfelt apology not only strengthens and mends the relationships in every areas of our life with our family, our friends and co-workers. So how is it that we get to both sides of the forgiveness, asking, asking and being forgiven and receive that just right or make that just right sincere apology? Well, in my experience how to accomplish this is through acceptance and when we accept we begin to open the door for learning how to fight fair i'd like to know what you think about this so the phone lines are open at 1-866-451-1451 this is bbm global network and where this is where the world comes to talk and so do you and i so again that number is 18664511451 share your thoughts and ideas on this so meanwhile let's begin with that ever encompassing word of acceptance and what acceptance is as you recall acceptance is the uh, balancing of three forces And I use the word forces because they're all powerful. Uh, It's love, justice, and the power to heal anyone or in any situation. This means, in my opinion, being able to be present to the anger of the situation or the person who has hurt us or we have hurt, and then begin to take steps to move constructively to restore um, the relationship and all of its um, and its emotional health and physical health in the relationship, balancing love, justice, and the healing power that goes along with acceptance, uh, is our contributing actions that are needed towards forgiveness and being forgiveness, being forgiven. Excuse me, and receiving and giving apologies. You and I both know that forgiven. 
forgiveness and to be forgiveness is possible, as I said before, even after a very, very deep hurt. And starting with this action of acceptance and apology, an apology is the way, even if the person is alive and not sorry, or unwilling, or not alive. Well, when I think about this, a fight or an argument, 95% of the time is never out of the blue. We hear the issue, we hear that topic, it just came out of the blue. Um, but it's an issue that's left over, um, kind of like that unrecognizable mystery container you find in the back of your refrigerator. Uh, you hold it up, you look at it, you sniff the outside, and finally just toss it without opening because you don't want to. You don't want to engage with what may be coming out of there. Well, that's kind of like what is arguments out of the blue, and it's almost always an issue without fail, from earlier fights. And you're uh, forced to open it up again and again. And then we're off and running. And we're uh, we're trying to get out as much anger and as much hurt and as much blame. And it has nothing to do with what started this out of the blue fight to begin with, you know, like crumbs all over the counter. The bottom line is that we all we all, you and I and our partners, each of us, let's be honest with here, uh, here have these little buttons uh, that can be easily pushed and can create huge conflict. And it's never about the hair clogs or the towels on the floor or the empty um, containers left in the pantry or the fridge. Uh, You and I both go right for those buttons of those little stuff right there and create that huge, huge mess. And you and I have to admit, we've never learned how to fight fair. We find ourselves doing and saying what we saw our parents do and our grandparents um, that didn't seem to work. And we, we do to it. And then we add to it. That add to it. We add our own twist. So as I'm thinking, as you may have thought, um, have I or do you and I fight? Well, everything has that ha- that has been great between us was not great, and now all of a sudden there's this fight that happened. So what happened to fighting fair, and what happened to our great relationship, and why is the great not enough to stop us from fighting. Well, you know, marriages also in cohabitating uh, relationships will have conflict and there will be hostility. This is a fact in all relationships. Hostility and fights begin most often during difficult times around difficult Um, subjects. Do we move in together? Do we not move in together? What's the budget? Uh, Do we have a budget? Have we gone over budget? Health problems? Uh, Where did the intimacy go? We haven't had any intimacy, even on a sensual level. Let's not even talk about the um, physical level. There's that nagging and caregiving. These are just a few of the touchy uh, topics And most of us will jump into these touchy topics, um, like jumping into the deep end of a swimming pool, um, holding our nose and cannonballing in. And these are topics which never come out of the blue. We have not learned how to handle or address these touchy uh, couple topics or relationship topics and for a uh, for a few reasons so let's look at that first off no one really knows what we're fighting about in the first place you may be fighting about uh, you may be fighting about uh, the container that's left empty in the refrigerator but the other person is thinking uh, that's not their job this is a good place for us to pause so that we can come back and talk about what are the reasons why these touchy subjects never seem to go anywhere. You've been listening to uh, BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio 
The show is all about you with your host, me, Dr. Martha Latz. And stay tuned and we'll find out the other reasons why. If you're a person caring for someone living with dementia, then this program is for you. It's designed for families and friends coping with the challenges of caregiving. The foundation of care, Susan Kohler believes, is communication. Innovative Dementia Care with Susan Kohler provides strategies to keep the lines of communication open between you and your loved one, increase quality interactions, decrease the burden of daily care for you, the caregiver. Join Susan, 11 a.m. Eastern, on the BBM Global Network. Susan and her guests will share techniques so you can facilitate your loved one's ability to safely follow your instructions, participate in daily activities, and express daily wants and desires. To learn positive solutions, creative ideas, and practical strategies that will build a healthy foundation of care. Global Glory, that's the work of Dr. Marina McLean, COO of Global Glory, whose calling is to serve God. A first-generation British-born Londoner of Jamaican descent, Dr. McLean inherited the hunger for the word from her father, who was a Bible teacher. Growing up, her home was filled with missionaries from the Caribbean islands and America, and she travels the world preaching the gospel. She has a Bachelor of Arts degree in theology and an honorary doctorate of divinity and Christian counseling from France. International Christian University. Dr. McLean is also a songwriter and recording artist, and her songs are written during summits and conferences in the presence of God. She's recorded three worship albums to date and is in ministry for 28 years alongside her husband, Dr. Rennie McLean, who shares her passion. Visit www.globalglory.org or on Facebook at Global Glory. Call 866 244 5679 and feel the glory. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And the show is It's All About You. And we've been talking about the touchy subjects of trying to fight fair and why we never be, we never on the same topic when we start fighting. You know, we really don't know what we're fighting about in the first place. We each have a different idea. Um And when there is no understanding or agreement about the reason, what happens is we are fighting without understanding. And without understanding, it's impossible to come to a compromise or a solution. And then we become unable to forgive or recognize when we want, when we seek to and admit that we need to have a therapist help in this, this, um, particular area you know it's a thing that we've been going over and over again and then you're off and running and you're trying to get out as much anger from all of the past unresolved fights that are still open and that uh, have not come to any kind of conclusion the past fights will have nothing to do with what the present fight is all about and the starter of this, and it's not the crumbs all over the counter or the hair that has clogged the drain for the umpteenth time. Um, th- these are just openings for us to jump into all of these other past resolved touchy subjects that kind of just come out of the blue. Well, if we think about it, we all knew and when there would be tension between our parents um, and our grandparents. Because the conversation, think about that, the conversation when we were growing up would be, would be quite heavy. Um, I can bet you can identify with some of the following or possibly all of, all of the following examples from our childhood when we know that there was something going on and brewing between mom and dad or mom and dad and grandparents or grandparents. Okay, uh, perhaps mom would cook dad's favorite meal. Uh, and dessert, and dad would then bring home some flowers or a box of chocolate or mom's perfume or a card. You know, that kind of lets ease into this. And then after dinner, 
um, and clean up, we would hear from mom and dad. Uh, it's time for you guys to go on out and play. It's a nice evening. Go on out and, um, in the backyard um, or go off and play a game downstairs. Uh, mom and dad, you are, we are, we're going to begin to talk and we'd like to have some privacy. So kids go on out and play. Then their discussion, because kids being kids, we'd hang by the door and we would begin uh, to hear the discussion and it would get heated, even though it was muffled behind the closed doors or where we are supposed to be. Uh, it was it got louder and louder. And sometime later it would stop. And then we would think it was all over, only to see our parents appear and tell us it's time for us to get ready. Uh, for bed, and then once we were all tucked in, we would hear the muffled sounds of the angry and hostile exchange over and over again. And then by the morning, magically, their discussion would stop until the next time. So we never knew what happened. All we knew is it stopped. The cycle would begin uh, again with references to the past unresolved fights. Ever had that cycle that go on, that has gone on? The thing that was missing is we never saw or heard how they forgave each other or how they came to a resolution. Um, You knew that um, they had not because they were talking through us. Um, You know, Martha, would you go tell your dad? Uh, Da, 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 da. And he was right in the same room. Um, You get the idea. I hear this still during couple and individual situations. Even with all the different ways for moms and dads to connect during the day, this type of behavior is still occurring. Will that will that help? Will that help the situation along or the relationship along? It's not fighting fair. Here's a kind of an example. The kids um, in this one particular family were acting out in school and they were fighting and they were refusing to apologize to classmates and to teachers for an ex- for something that had occurred and needed to be apologized. For example, taking um, the book from another child that was reading this. Uh, the parents would uh, say, but to the teachers um, that they don't understand that and that um, they never fight in front of their children. But when they came to me and I asked them, I said, so you tell me you're not fighting in front of the children. That's right. That's right. So then I said, do I have permission? And they gave me permission to talk to each of the, there were two, there were two children, uh, alone and they said yes and uh, without you without you interjecting just let us sit back and I will talk to them alone directly uh, but you can hear what they would say and I asked I said to the older child I said how do you know when uh, your mother is angry and the one, and the oldest child said, "Well, she, she, her eyes go really wide. She screams. She screams with her eyes." Mm. And I asked the younger child, and the younger child described that dad's mouth would get really, really tight, and his head would look like it would shrink. Um, and then I looked at the parents and I said, does this surprise you? And they both nodded in agreement. And the parents could not explain how they ever resolved or if they even forgave each other. Um, and they both agreed that that's what usually happened and their fight would just fare. The more productive way to handle a couple's conflict to begin to start fl- there would begin to be with the contract. And to uh, rec- uh, the conflict and recognize that couples, happy couples, fight fair. It's just a fact. We're two different people. We have two different types of processing information, disseminating information, um, figuring out how to solve a problem. And if you are the, a person that wants peace at all costs for fear of rocking a boat because we don't know how to resolve, uh, you will and you will hurt your relationship 
I've got a message for you. You will hurt the relationship if you will not uh, confront an issue that needs to be confronted because you don't want to rock the boat. It's not important uh, how we come to this. What's important is what we do to this. What is the last message you want to send and receive? Okay, we as couples... We want to fight fair. We want to uh, we want to be more telling about what our fights are coming about. And any professional will tell you this. So right now, as we're learning, we're going to start going into fighting fair. A great place for us to cause and uh, to pause and look at what is the general causes of our fights, and how do we begin? Go in the middle, and how do we resolve? So stay tuned. You've been listening to It's All About You with me, your host, Dr. Martha, live on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and we're going to learn how to fight fair in these situations. So stay tuned. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BV, BVM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And our show is It's All About You. And we've been talking about how to fight fair and recognizing when we are not fighting fair and when we are fighting fair. And if you're rolling your eyes and say, I do fight fair, Mm, I don't think so. I think we can all use a refresher. I know I can. So what I want to point out here, though, and I want to be very clear, I am not including the critical signs of emotionally abusive and physically abusive relationship. The time for you to develop the skills for fighting fair have passed. Even if your relationship has not reached that critical mass of um, physical and emotional abuse, there are serious issues. So if you think you are in one or you don't know for sure, sure, my suggestion here is to seek professional help uh, to help you identify um, and don't try to do this evaluation on your own because you might just continue to cycle with not a clear directions. So this is the time, and I will encourage you to s- seek out a skilled, uh, licensed, and marriage family therapist to help you and your family. Because let's face it, we are not taught how to fight fair and what it means to fight fair. So uh, keep that in mind. Um, so, how do we do this? Those little buttons that can be so easily pushed and create huge, huge conflicts, like I said before, the hair clogs, the towels on the floor, empty containers. Um, The door has just swung wide open for us to jump into these touchy, out of the blue, unresolved conflicts. And it always comes at difficult times and around difficult subjects, such as budgets. I thought, as you have thought, if there are such little button issues, just ignore them and move on. It doesn't work that way. I know because I've tried doing just that thing and to discover um, discover a secret. Lean in close, okay? The agreement among my colleagues and myself is that for arguments to be productive, one 
they really should last no longer than 15 minutes to an hour. And going, whoa, I fought for longer than that. Um, And if they want to go on longer than that, call a timeout and set a time for you to go back later, maybe the same day to discuss what was going on there. Set a maximum time, okay, in one day, no more than two to three hours. You can call that time out, come back to it again and again, even in the same day to resolve it. Don't let these little button issues build up because that's what happens. They build up and then we have one very large explosion over a lot of different subjects. And this is not fair to you or to your partner or to the situation. You know, try, try to meet that and get that resolved earlier. And if you, you and your partner are angry and um, you bring it up at the very beginning, don't let and start processing it. Don't let it, it uh, go for any longer than 24 to 48 hours. Because if you do, it's not fighting fair. Each of you now have has made your own ideas about what it is. And it's far from the original topic, or the issue that has come to light. You or your spouse or your partner set an agreed time and place within that first 24 hours, which is very, very effective. I know it's I've tried it personally, and it's been tried professionally during my sessions, and it's really, really good. Make sure that you hold each other accountable to that agreed upon time frame. If you have separate work schedules and it has to go out to 40, uh, 48 hours, two days, then let it do that. But come back and agree to go back to the time. Be clear. I can't stress this, and my colleagues always stress this. Be clear about the issue that you're fighting about and stick to the issue. I don't like the fact, here's an example, I don't like the fact that you made that agreement to uh, my free time and our free time without consulting me. Stick with it. Not that this always happens. Stick with that. This is the current topic. When you find yourself moving off of that current topic and going to uh, situations that happened before and the always and you always do this and I never have a say in what we do with our free time, go back to the current issue. It's this one topic, this one issue of this current free time. Pause. Take a break. Get a glass of water. Stretch your legs. Tell your partner you're doing this to break the cycle when you feel like you're getting ready to burst into the ancient history uh, situations. Uh, focus on focus on the present scene, because if you don't, it's going to get blurred and neither are you are going to be clear about what the issue is any longer. That, this is an impor- that was an important key. Keep the fight between both of you, no third parties. What I mean by this is for you to you gather somebody else so that they can help you prove your point or that you can be um, have consensus that this is the way these see so and so agrees me, with me. When the fight the fight has been settled and it will settle between you and your partner, uh, it will be forgiven. But at social gatherings. Uh, It can be awkward, I promise you, because nobody knows that it has been settled between the two of you. The biggest thing is no name calling. Even if you're using the enduring terms or pet names, this can be hurtful when it's used with a critical or sarcastic tone. Um, When it's used, I know it's been done to me. I know that I've done it. So no name calling, even if it's, yes, dear, okay, honey. You know, there's a difference than, yes, dear, or okay, honey. Very different, endearing terms. Pay attention for fighting fear. Pay attention to words. It's difficult to build trust and tenderness in, ter- in terms of endearment when they are used with harsh sounds of anger. 
goes back to what I talked about, no name calling, even with endearing terms. When you use these endearing terms during a fight, and then it's surrounded by sweeter tones, um, those sweeter tones will take a back seat, even if there's no fight, and the critical sarcastic tones, excuse me, will be very, very present. Think about that. Put that in the back of your mind. Then you wonder why the, your person isn't re- responding to your endearing terms. It's the critical and the sarcastic tones that blare back at them with that sound. Those sweeter endearing times, those softer times are no longer. Intimacy will be lost. To quote a colleague of mine, Dr. Matthew Anderson, he says, your words matter. Pay attention. Your words matter. And that's a a really good um, quote to keep in the back of your mind when you start fighting. Laughter and humor, really, really great. But it may be misinterpreted when you're in the heat of the moment as teasing, not listen, not listening, interrupting you, you are an opportunity for, you, for blame to start taking care place and making those accusations and can be, be received as hitting below the belt. And you start using the words never and always. Active listening is another point. Watch your body language. Look at each other when you're speaking and trying to touch, try to touch your hands or your knees um, with, each, with each other. This is a, a, a moment for us to take in these, cons, these different key elements that go into fighting fair and paying attention. So you've been listening to It's All About You with Dr. Martha on live on BBM Global Network and tune in radio and come back and we'll find out what we are going to do in attempting to fight fair. Stay tuned. See you on the other side. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. You know, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416-529-7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well. Be aware. Be magical. Joseph A. Moylan is the owner of Ion Health, which specializes in very unique medical devices. Ion Health offers biomats, alkalife, and frequency machines. Biomats are a far infrared and negative ion emitting FDA approved medical device. With many different sizes available, you can place them on your bed, on a massage table, or on a seat in your car. It is an unobtrusive way to health. Alkalife machines are water ionizers that cleanse and raise the alkalinity of your tap water, making high alkaline water. Frequency machines utilize certain frequencies to kill viruses and bacteria. These devices are safe and effective. Coming from a health-conscious background and studying physiology at the Academy of Natural Health, Joseph A. Moylan has 15 years of experience in the health field and wants to help you live a healthy, long life. Visit www.ionhealthbiomats.weebly.com or call 765-520-2988. Don't let your health go astray. Get in touch today. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, before the break, we were talking about, you know, all the stuff that we put into trying to fight fair and trying not to um, 
uh, fight fair, all those all those components that are there. And you and I have been attempting to do this fighting fair stuff for a long time, I can bet. I know I have, and yet we still get into these nasty, nasty uh, fights that call into um, ancient history. And then all of our old fighting habits come back front and center. There's name calling. There's character assassination of our of our character, your partner's character, the family character, uh, their family of origin, the yelling. You know, we stop listening to each other. And all of our other old past fights take front and center stage. The current one is gone. Um, This is going on with couples that come to my office. So what is happening here? Um, This is what I think is happening here. It's my opinion, but it's told, it's held true to my, um, in my professional life as well as personal life. Those old destructive attitudes have been activated. We go back to those negative communication patterns. You know the ones. Sarcasm, name calling, um, ridicule. The fighting fighting fair has just been left. The building has left behind and here we are again. Uh, what has re-entered is that we're being defensive. We begin denying any wrongdoing, our responsibility, our tit for tat has come in. You know, you did this, so I did that. Uh, keeping that scorecard, okay. Well, you did this this many times. I can do that for that many times. Um You can reach some sort of short-term stress release, but then it creates that long-term conflict that continues to grow and grow, setting the cycle for, you got it, revenge, just waiting for the opportunity to take revenge. So when this begins to happen, what to do? Take a deep breath, let it out very slowly, and pause Begin to call yourself back to active listening without defending. Focus on your partners. Um, Focus on and understand and how to move away from sentences that begin with or contain you always, you never. You, You know those global terms. Pause here because it's not true. It can't be always and never. But when that enters our dialogue, it opens the door for all of those past unresolved uh, conflicts to come racing back in. You're getting off topic and you're defending yourself, not only for what has gone on now, but for past actions of those, what they call ancient history. Pause, pause, and find a way to get back to the topic so you can come to some sort of negotiated agreement or even full solution and resolution. Demanding that your point of view or my point of view is the only one that is to be received. Uh, The person that we're trying to convince um, feels that this is a personal attack. And that's when name calling and blaming and mind reading come in. Pause and make sure you're not assigning reasons to the behaviors for both you and your and and your partner. And when both of your reasons, my reason, your reason, are valid, this is when we are when we are there and where solutions can be found because we're in the present moment. In my opinion, the quick drying glue. Uh, in this ever and ending uh, fight and cycle is that is revenge. And if we're feeling or if we're thinking about revenge, what are you doing? Are you stonewalling? This is defensive. It's disrespectful. And it may border on contempt. Stonewalling allows time for the conflict to grow and for us to justify our reasons for not talking, not listening, not making time for your partner's concern, need, or request. You and I have learned the hard way. Stonewalling solves nothing, and only, but, it, but it creates. And it only creates resentment, hard feelings, 
damages our relationship even further, and we end up with more fighting sooner rather than later. So what to do about that? Set a mutually agreed upon time. If we feel like we're stonewalling or we are being stonewalled, find a time within 24 hours to have this discussion, to hold each other accountable, to meet again upon an agreed upon time for this commitment. Remember, both you and I are responsible. And this will show respect and how important your relationship is to you and to your partner. So it's much, it's much better to make time, and I mean really make the time, to listen to your partner's troubling issues in your relationship or that they see in the relationship or that they feel. Um, and I find that this is so much better when we take time um, that we, have, we validate feelings and respects the thoughts of our partners, and it's easier for us to go and to find a mutually agreed upon solution. I have also found that the largest uh, result is to raise your partner and your relationship to trust along with confidence. I'm respected. This is a great place for us to pause. You've been listening to It's All About You live on BBM Global Network and Tune In Radio. I am your host, Dr. Martha, and we're going to come back and think about it's always important to fight for our relationships. So stay tuned. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network. And the show is It's All About You. And the topic today is fighting fair and how to win um, for in our relationship. You know, from my own personal experience, when I find that I'm bickering about something, um, usually it's I'm not content. And when I'm not content, sometimes I'm not cherishing uh, my relationship and I'm focusing on things like work. Uh, But remember, the key to fighting fair is to fight for the relationship, not to win. My point may be valid. You know, I needed to focus on work, but not at the expense of hurting my partner's feelings. So what to do about that? Be open and be willing to ask for forgiveness and be willing to forgive. Not forgiving and holding a grudge and seeking only the opportunity for revenge is harming all involved, in both directly to each other and all of the other people that we, we love. So remember, recall that there's a time limit for fighting. This means not to stretch on indefinitely, um, because when we do that, it changes our valid points or issues, and they sound like they're nagging, or even worse, that we're holding a grudge, and the relationship collapses even further. Your relationship is worthy of effort. Again, I want to pause here and I want to remind you and make it very clear that if you are, um, there are the signs, uh, critical signs that you may be in an emotional, abusive or physical relationship, please seek professional help of a skilled licensed in marriage and family therapist. This is an important reminder. Don't try to identify it or to evaluate it 
on your own, seek professional help. So let's go back to forgiveness. Well, we have to uncover the myths and the facts and the skills needed to forgive and to be forgiven. You and I know that one building block for forgiveness is fighting fair. And the skills needed um, to fight fair during the fight when it's actually going on is to remember that you're fighting for your relationship. It's not about your relationship to others or to form a team to support your point of view or our point of view. So make your point or so that you can make your point and win. But when you do that, what happens? Your relationship loses. And you're, and you're left with, once the, the argument has ceased, that the team that you put behind you, whether it's your parents or your siblings or your friends, that your partner is still a jerk. So be open and willing to ask for for forgiveness. But on the same token, you need to be willing to forgive. Not forgiving allows that your grudge is held. You're seeking an opportunity for revenge. This harms everybody involved, you and your partner and everybody else that's there. Recall that there needs to be time limits. None of these marathon stretching on into hours and days. Uh, These marathon um, fights uh, change everything. When I say that, it changes everything. There may be valid points or issues, but they become lost. And then your partners, and it sounds like you're nagging and you're holding a grudge and the relationship, remember, collapses even further. I want to point out during this broadcast that when you become aware of what and who you cannot forgive, that's important. Be very clear This may include experiences of emotional, physical, sexual, and criminal abuse. This is a time for you to seek professional help and to develop skills for healthy issues, healthy coping for these and forgiveness for these types of issues. There is additional stages to be set for more serious issues again. Our next broadcast, will be, we will consider these out of the blue or where did that come from fights. And these are all, always also fueled by um, the phase of our relationship, you know, uh, where our relationship is in our different phases. And there are several. And it's all too common. So this is what we're going to focus on a little bit more for next week and next week's um next week's topic but the topic for fighting fair takes exercise we need to exercise this we need to go back and we'll accomplish some parts of it we will accomplish all of it at times or we will fail miserably but the idea is to keep keep coming back to keep coming back to looking at the stages for fighting fair And remember, with all of that effort, we're fighting for our relationship. You've put time and effort into your relationship, long periods of time, long, long, long effort, learning how to compromise, uh, learning to learning when we're not compromising, but realizing that there are several areas when we're fighting fair. One of the things I want you to keep in mind is where do you fight when you're fighting in your personal relationship? What part of the apartment or house do you fight in? Do you fight in the kitchen? Do you fight in the living room? Or like most couples, you go to your bedroom to fight. Think about Think about this because this becomes an area where we need to take some time and look at the area that we're that we're fighting in Uh, and to fight fair. It's not in the bedroom. So we're going to talk about that a little bit more. We're going to explore that. Um, that we need to forgive ourselves when we need to forgive ourselves for what leaves when we're not fighting fair, the intimacy 
and possibly it's the location in which we are fighting. So when you want to have a topic, and it's a topic that you need to talk about, that touchy su- subject, let's just pick, well, let's just pick the topic of um, budget. And it's come up and it needs, and the fight is, you, it's escalated to a fight and where do we move that fight to? So this is a great place for us to pause, come back to this topic on the other side of the break, that, at that actual location where we are fighting. Remember, you've been listening to It's All About You live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio, and I am your host, Dr. Martha. See you on the other side, and we'll find the location. Tune into It's All About You with host Dr. Martha Latz, a lively weekly broadcast on BBM Global Network, one of the most empowering shows for time-starved, overscheduled multitaskers. The professional expertise of Dr. Latz is directly available live every Thursday at 1 p.m. to answer and address concerns about relationships, life transitions of career, meeting, dating, and committed relationships. It's All About You with Dr. Latz will expand your understanding of current and concerns across your relationships by broadening and expanding possible solutions in developing skills for mutually desired outcomes. Dr. Martha's expertise is as a licensed marriage and family therapist, life, transition coach, and all things to do with communication at work, home, and with friends. Check out her website at auniquetherapycenter.com. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Welcome back. I am your host, Dr. Martha, coming to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. And the show is It's All About You. And the topic has been fighting fair and how to put and recognize when we're not fighting fair. Uh, The stonewalling, that defensiveness that we put up that shows that the relationship isn't important. But what I had put out there before the break is what I want you to take um, take notice of and to think about it as we're we're exploring this. You know, when we get into those um, those fights, a lot of times we're not standing still. We're moving through our environment. If we're at home, it may start in the family room and we may be moving into the living room and then we may be moving into the kitchen and then we may be moving back. But where it usually ends up, if we're really, really honest and the environment that it ends up in is our bedroom. Think about how it ends up in our bedroom. Think about that when we are in these um, continual marathon fights with no resolve and we're withholding um, tenderness, we're withholding touch, and that how I said to be fighting fair, most arguments should be tabled at about 15 minutes and ideally touching your partner. Well, this is not happening. As you look around in your bedroom, I want you to think about that. This is the room that you and your partner go to to feel safe. This is the room that you and your partner go to be quiet, to um, nurture and hold each other. But if this is the room you also go to, and that's where you have your fights, 
what happens? Well, the only thing I can um, give you as a really good example, I don't know uh, if any of you um, currently have a pet, training a puppy, uh, uh, having uh, animals that you want to train for uh, respecting places and times so and making them feel safe. So we bring this adorable puppy home and their crate is their safe place. That's that's the place where they that's the place where they are soft. If you're still fighting and you're fighting there and you and you put the puppy back in there for everything, he doesn't want to go into the cage. It's the same thing with our bedroom. If that's where we continually fight, that's not a good place for us to be. Remember uh, the, not to stretch these fights, but change the location. Don't bring it into the bedroom where you want to be soft and tender with each other. You know, again, um, you know, we're going to be talking about next time about how that um, fights um, don't just come out of the blue. Uh, what to do with it, where they start when they seem like they come out of the blue. And it comes out and the fights are often fueled by what phase we find our relationship in. Are we in our dating phase? Are we in our, uh, our commitment phase? Are we in our phase where we feel betrayed? These are the common areas where we think that these fights come out of the blue, but they are often fueled by this phenomena. Now, you know, next week is that uh, not coming out of the blue. So as I'm thinking about the future and going forward, there are, I'm having a lot of new ideas. If any of you have some ideas that you'd like to hear of topics, please drop me a line on my email at lats2000 at AOL.com. So until next time, I want to thank you all for listening to It's All About You and this great topic of fighting fair that comes to you live from BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. So we're saying goodbye until you and I say hello again next Thursday at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard on BBM Global Network and TuneIn Radio. You've been listening to It's All About You with your host, Dr. Martha Latz. Join us next week as we explore solutions and resolutions to some of your most challenging moments on Dr. Martha Latz, It's All About You. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.